Hi Year 7, um, I'm away this week on a training course so I thought I would speak to you like this virtually um, to talk to you today about Forgotten Heroes um, and to ask you who should we celebrate? So we've done loads of celebration this year so far, we've had our wonderful Peace Poster contest and we announced the winners last week. Um, we've looked at all different kinds of poster designs, we've thought about famous faces as part of our posters, um, we've thought about particular movements or issues that we might want to put into poster format to raise awareness about, for example, climate change. Um, but today the title Forgotten Heroes is really about those people that perhaps we should be celebrating more, but maybe we don't even think to notice or remember particularly. So on your starter task today, you've got this image and it's a photograph of Lillian Bader. And she was one of the first black women to join the British Armed Forces. And she was in the RAF. Now, I do wonder what you think the term forgotten hero means. Um, and if you can actually think of an example. So if you want to, you can pause the video now and you might like to speak to the person next to you about somebody you know who is maybe a bit of a hero, but maybe never gets any recognition for what they do. Lillian Bader is really important because as a young black woman joining the military, she set an extraordinarily uh, good example for other young women at the time, especially young black women, um, that they too uh, belonged, they were part of Britain, they were British, they were part of British culture, mm, and that there wasn't an obstacle to them being part of the British military. Um, once she'd left the armed forces, she went on and became a teacher, and actually pretty much her entire family, her brothers and her husband, they were all part of the British armed forces. Um, as a family, they really should be celebrated as heroes, um, not just because they were in the military and gave their life to the service of Britain, but also because even when not um, uh, working as part of the RAF, going into teaching, she again was giving back into uh, her British culture, into the society from which she came. So I've got an example now, and You'll probably find the haircuts extremely funny. I do. So this is a photograph from my parents' wedding and it's my uncles and my grandpa. My grandpa is the man who is second from the left. And his name was Alec. Um, and I've said here, maybe in your own family or community, you've got a forgotten hero. Um, and a hero isn't always someone who's done something really great or grand. Um, but it's often someone who's made the world a better place in some small way. Mm, sometimes our heroes aren't famous people. They're just ordinary people of everyday life. But I chose my grandpa, Robertson, um, because I think he is a bit of a hero. And I'm going to tell you a really short story about him. In the Second World War, he was in the RAF. And very sadly, um, his plane got shot down. And he was the only survivor in the plane and everybody else he knew, all his friends died and he was very badly burned. Um, and so that was a really terrible, terrible thing to have happened. But he was a very dis uh, determined person and he was actually noticed by a man called Mackindoo. And Mackindoo was a pioneering plastic surgeon and he took my grandpa along with lots of other um, young men who had especially been burned um, in aircraft accidents and worked on them as guinea pigs to develop pioneering plastic surgery techniques. And so my papa, Grandpa Robertson, uh, was part of the Mackindoo Guinea Pig Club. And I grew up with this story, I didn't think anything of it. But now that I'm a grown up and I've looked into Mackindoo's history and what happened and what, what he did, I realised that my grandpa was actually part of a much bigger history um, of this pioneering plastic surgery. And so, for example, my grandpa had to have quite a lot of reconstruction on his face and his ear. Um, 
And there's lots of evidence of the young men who worked with Mackindoo going on to not just live full and happy lives, but also um, being the blueprint, being the guinea pigs for lots of other people who would need plastic surgery in the future because of especially things like burns. So for me, my unsung hero is my Papa Robertson, Alec Robertson, my grandpa. And I want to introduce you to this person, Una Marson. As far as I'm concerned, another unsung hero. She was a Jamaican feminist. She was an activist and a writer. She produced poems and plays and radio programmes. She travelled to London in 1932, so a long time ago, and became the first black woman to be employed by the BBC during World War II. And in 1942, she became producer of the programme Calling the West Indies, turning it into Caribbean Voices. It was a very long-running uh, long programme. Uh, and it became an important forum for Caribbean literary work. Now, Una Marson should be celebrated for the pioneering work she did to champion um, not just women's voices, but also Caribbean voices, black voices, female black voices. People who stand up for others, people who do things that are um, in some way going to improve, uh, or create progress within culture or society, we should be celebrating them and we should know who they are. And so I want us to think, Una Marson famously said, we must come together. It is only then things will be done. How can we use text to make our posters more meaningful? Well, you can see on the screen there an example I drew on the whiteboard at school um, of Una Marson. Um, and I've used text there based on that famous quote by her um, to create a sense of her speaking out really loudly to the people to tell them what she thinks. Now, the text has become part of the image design and the shape that moves away from where her mouth is towards the microphone tells us about something to do with the volume of what she's saying. And I wanted to create the sense that there was volume because I want it to sound really loud even though it's just a picture. Your task today is going to be working from an image I will give you of Una Marson to create a poster design in your book that uses texts, that's words, to show what was important about her message to the people. You can see on the screen now a really iconic poster by an artist called Shepherd Fairy. Lots of you will know Shepherd Fairy's work because he is also um, the designer for Obey, that's his company, uh, the clothing and skate brand Obey. It's a really, really graphical, very bold way of working. You can see there the poster I've put is actually of Angela Davis. Uh, Davis rather, she was a civil rights or is a civil rights activist in America. And the poster's got those brilliant words, power and equality, really big at the bottom. And then round the edge, if you notice, it says power to the people. Now this is a really, really good example of how text is used within poster imagery to enhance, support, or exaggerate meaning. And though my version is just the version that I drew on the whiteboard, I am using text here in a way that supports and enhance, uh, enhances and conveys a sense of meaning. Now, you're gonna use color and pattern to make your design bold, thinking about other symbols perhaps that you could include or add to give more meaning or context to the person and the point of the poster. So today we're gonna to be working on Una Marson and that quote again, we must come together is only then things will be done. She was talking generally about society, but she was also talking about um, people in the black communities in the UK in the 1940s, for example, who otherwise might have felt quite marginalized. Um, I don't know if you can notice, but there, on her blouse, I've drawn a symbol. Now, actually, this was in discussion with some year seven students. And they said that actually, if she were alive now, she would very much have been part of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. And, and so we did a symbol on her blouse, kind of like a badge that is the fist Black Lives Matter. So we're trying to tie in things, other symbols that are going to add to the meaning or context of what these characters, these unsung heroes actually mean. So again, to recap what you're going to do today, you're going to get an image of Una Marson 
Um, she is our unsung hero for our classwork. Mm, you're going to be inspired by Shepherd Fairy, uh, who is the artist of the poster we can see on the screen just now. You're going to use colour and pattern to make your design bold, and you're going to use that all important text. So the text I think is most significant comes from the quote by Anna Martin, we must come together, it's only then things will be done. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you produce um, in response to this work. You're going to work in your sketchbooks and you're going to make sure that you stick in your starter as usual. Um, and that also everything you do is really, really neatly laid out. Please do remember to title your work. So today it's going to be Unsung Heroes. Mm, and I would like you please to make sure that you put the date, you underline it, and that of course your designs are really, really thoughtful. So I look forward to seeing what you produce to your seven.